Have a good day. If YouTube demonetizes this video, fuck you. Got head cheese? Well, I sure do. L.A. beast here. And with my blinders on and my feet moving forward at 189%, all that I plan on doing is keeping that YouTube ball rolling. Why? Because YouTube has made me mad so many times that as long as YouTube exists, now I'm going to 100% continue to create content and post it right here on YouTube. So what I have done is order questionable and strange food items from all over the world. And I'm not only surprised that some of these food items actually made it through customs at the airport, but to some people, these foods are delicious and consumed on a daily basis. And here today, I'm going to decide for myself if these foods really are delicious or they're not by tasting them for myself. Now, I'm not the greatest fan of foods that have a liquidy, squishy feel when you eat them, such as applesauce and hummus. And with some of the questionable food items that I ordered because I know what I'm about to eat, my mental mindset and taste buds will be tested to the fullest. And sitting here, right here, right now, I am already having second thoughts. But if an apocalypse happened tomorrow to where the only way I could survive was consuming the questionable food items that I'm about to consume, would I? Absolutely. And that is the mindset that I'm going to have as we start this video. And just for the record, before we get started, a few of these strange and questionable food items I'll actually be revisiting after eight or nine years since I've tasted them last. And one of these items was actually inspired by the show Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmern. And back in 2013 and 14, I was trying to purchase this item, but you literally had to be in that country to buy it in person. But here in 2022, somehow, some way, uh, this company shipped in a bag uh, to where there are many different difficulties that have happened uh, but somehow it has finally made it through U.S. Customs to where I'm excited. You know what? I'm not really excited, but I'm kind of excited to try it for the first time ever. So without further ado, I am the L.A. Beast, and this is the questionable, strange, weird food taste test. The very first questionable and strange food item that I'm going to be tasting right now is grass jelly. And what is grass jelly? I have no idea, but I'm interested to find out. And just by looking at what it looks like, it looks like it would taste like the black Easter jelly beans that my mom would put out in a dish on Easter as I was growing up as a kid. And will it probably taste like grass? It depends on which grass we're talking about. Okay, grass jelly or leaf jelly or herb jelly, nice is a jelly-like dessert eaten in East and Southeast Asia. And it is created by utilizing the Platostoma palustre plant, giving this a mild, bitter taste. It is served chilled with other toppings such as fruit and or in bubble tea. And right here, right now, as I'm about to open this, this is 100% warm. Pretty much, uh, in my opinion, I think it's gonna smell like a health food store or any herby supplement that is sold in a health food store. So let's. Uh, speed this up. Let's open this up. Ah, cool. All right. So, jeez, Louise. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's just get the close up of what I think it looks like. There it is. I think it's just a straight up glob of canned Jello. Um, all right. So here we go. Come on. Mm. Grass jelly, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, well, I was I was not expecting uh, the grass jelly to just be. I thought it was going to be in chunks. Mmm. Uh, it, it does have like an earthy smell, but it also smells like stale farts. I'm not getting any hint of mint uh, whatsoever. Ah. Uh, okay, you know what? Uh, if you've ever smelled the inside of a brand new sneaker, uh, and it smells actually pretty good. Just take that pretty good smell and let's take it down 30 notches. Uh, it's like a 30% good smell of brand new sneaker. Let's taste this. That, ladies and gentlemen, grass jelly. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, it, just, it just made a suction noise. Hmm. Okay, great, excellent. Uh, that That is what grass jelly looks like. Bon Appetit Day. Oh. Mm. 
Well, the texture is definitely like, ooh. Uh, there's like a dirt. Uh, it's like a, a dirt after finish. Uh, it smelled uh, and tasted like as if an old timer tree just farted in my face. Um, oh, okay, you know what, exactly. Probably, you know what, probably if one of the trees from Lord of the Rings farted in my face, that's pretty much what grass jelly tastes like. Jesus, uh, I'm not getting any hint of candy canes whatsoever. Okay, you know what, uh, I can definitely handle the texture of jello as I just turned regular food items into jello in a recent video. Uh, it has the consistency uh, if you're eating a hard-boiled egg, like the shell of a hard-boiled egg, no, and it just it smells like very earthy tree farts. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, grass jelly. Next item. It actually kind of looks like in Terminator 2, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, enemy. Not really, I was way off. That melty stuff. This next item, which I definitely don't want to consume, but I'm going to do it anyway, is going to be charred sweet pineapple gel and honestly I couldn't find too much information on jarred pineapple gel except that it's from the Philippines uh, and that the ingredients include coconut gel, refined sugar, water, pineapple flavor, uh, and F, D, and C, yellow number five. Uh, so that you know what this looks extra chunky and extra liquidy and, and the cap look extra dirty. It looks dirty. When it comes to pineapples I've actually consumed an entire pineapple including the skin while I had icy hot on my balls. So the texture is not going to be an issue. And as far as gels, not only have I consumed doing the New York City Half Marathon in 2 hours, 6 minutes, 39 seconds, I've consumed Gatorade goo gels, but I've also had the pleasure of consuming the gel of a Sweet Sue's whole chicken in a can. As you can see right here, you can actually hear the gel, the gelness. So how bad can jarred pineapple gel from the Asian market really be? Here, here we go. Ah, uh, this is, ah, uh, there's like dirty crustiness. Okay, you know what? It, it has a faint smell. If anybody uh, is a fan of Nickelodeon, it smells like Nickelodeon gack. Uh, and it kind of, it smells like grass jelly. Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. Ah, oh, it's got, it's got, I can smell that FDAC yellow number five times ten. Ah, oh, just eat it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have some pineapple gel, uh, which may really just be uh, coconut, coconut gel. Okay, there we go. Uh, up close shot. Here we go. Hmm. All right. Uh, it, hmm. It's got it's got a, a, a touch of honey, but it actually like uh, it, the consistency of a straight up flemwad, uh, like Buzz from Home Alone. Uh, he's like, hey, don't you know how to knock flemwad? Uh, but then it's got like a, a honey, uh, like maybe what a baklava would, would taste like. Interesting, and then uh, as I'm gonna take another spoonful, I really don't taste the pineapple. Weird. Um, I'm trying to just. It, um, it's not like gel to where it like goos in your mouth, like gooey. It's not gooey. There's like a, a chewiness to it. Ooh, yeah, it's 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 escaping me. Well, I'll actually have to go back when I edit this. I'm actually gonna go back and do nothing while editing this. A uh, bite of chunkiness uh, with a, a finish of sweet honey. Pineapple gel to me isn't that bad. I thought this would be the worst one yet. Not bad. What I have in my hand is a glorious one pound block of head cheese or brawn, like the brawny paper towel man quite possibly. And all that is is a cold cut terrine meat jelly which originated in Europe. And this is made from the flesh of a head of a calf and or pig set in aspic, which I have no idea what that is. And it's usually eaten cold and or at room temperature, but I've had this baby uh, in the refrigerator for the past couple days. And despite its name of head cheese, this actually contains no dairy 
and it, it's not cheese whatsoever. Quite honestly, I feel like I'm going to enjoy this head cheese. As people have said that pork head meat has a bacon-like taste and flavor. And I'm actually no stranger to consuming animal head as back in 2015, to help the Chicago Cubs overcome the curse of the billy goat, Notorious B.O.B. Bob Shout, Tim Gravy Brown, Pat Deepdish Bertoletti, Takiro Kobayashi, and myself, we all, in under 10 minutes, consumed a slightly undercooked 40-pound goat to where my job was actually to eat the head, uh, which included the eyes, the tongue, and the brain. And even though it was quite flavorful, uh, as I was being interviewed afterwards by a local Chicago news station, uh, I had to excuse myself and go to the bathroom as I fell ill. So hopefully this local Polish deli uh, who supplied me with this Salsazan Wyszewski head cheese, hopefully, uh, this is a fresh block. Uh, you know what, we're just gonna, okay, we're just gonna slash the table and open up this straight up head cheese. I'm touching head cheese. Get it onto the plate. Ah. Oh. Mmm, it's got like a bologna, a bologna salaminess to it. Uh, but I, I think it's actually, it looks so cool. Now you can actually see the gelatin right there uh, in one of the chunks. Let's just do this. Oh, it, it, it smells like a very rich bologna uh, bratwurst. Okay. Let, let's, let's get a nice slice uh, right here. Let's see if we can get, even get that on camera there. Uh, so it's it's got like a, a a casing to it. Wow. Whoa. Yes. Uh, and they say uh, that head cheese it kind of like uh, let's put the knife away from me. It's kind of like melts in your mouth. Like once the gelatin melts, it's kind of like just like a a bacon fat flavor. And I really hope right here right now I'm a, I'm about to experience this. Head cheese. Oh, we're, we're going with that gelatin spot right there. Corned beef. Whoa. I can only imagine like putting this in a frying pan. Spam? Fuck you. Uh, yeah, like head cheese in a pan uh, for breakfast with a nice hash brown. Mmm. I'm eating pig head. Nice, okay. Now, whatever the... It was like salt, pepper, uh, seasoning for sure in this thing. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's like a, a corned beef feeling to it. Uh, very flavorful. Uh, I can definitely feel like the... <laughs> The oils and everything, uh, like if you're eating salami, um, very good, very delicious. I think, now uh, even though you're supposed to actually eat head cheese cold, grilling it up and like adding it to a sandwich, that would be actually be amazing. Uh, 100%, uh, totally, I would recommend Polish head cheese. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm going to save this and eat it. This is good. Head cheese. The following item was a last minute pickup based solely on the name alone, and that would be Yoder's Hamburger. Uh, to where, Yoder's Hamburger to where the ingredients read straight up beef. Now I know the Yoder's company make other canned foods such as canned bacon, uh, which I actually tried in my weird canned food taste test video. But when it comes to consuming hamburger in a can, I'm also no stranger. As back in 2014, I failed to achieve my goal of consuming as many canned cheeseburgers in a can in a three minute time period after plowing through a door for the first time. Oh, oh today I'm gonna eat some cheeseburger in a can. Cut. And because I lost that challenge, I had to super glue my hand to my face. Ah! Oh. Burning my hand! I gotta get this off my face. Oh my god. Oh boy, that's not good. Ugh. I have my sister's graduation tomorrow. To win the process, when I pulled my hand off, I ripped off half of my beard. 
And the following day, I actually had to go to my sister's college graduation to wear in all the photos. I looked foolish. So right here, right now, because I paid roughly $28.97, I'm going to see what canned hamburger tastes like. Uh, and you know what, quite honestly, I think uh, I, I was expecting hamburger patties. As it said, the beef is like cooked and ready to go. Uh, not quite sure what we're about to get, if it's ground beef and or patties, but if it's patties, that'd be pretty cool. And if not, that'd be pretty cool too. And we can speed this part up as I open up the can and I will give you my honest thoughts of what it smells and tastes like. I haven't used one of these things in ages. But you know what, I just used one to open the grass jelly. Jesus! Okay, you know, my bad. Mmm. Uh, hmm, okay. 100% uh, have I consumed three jar cans of dog food before in my life? Yes. Uh, it definitely smells like dog food, uh, which in turn, because I described dog food as tasting like my grandmother's attic, it smells like my grandmother's attic and holy dang! Uh, it is in fact patties. Wow. That looks like a, a, a brain. That looks like a sheep's brain. Uh, you know what, I, I'm not gonna 100% tip the can over there. Uh, because I don't want to uh, spill. This is amazing. Woo! It seems like there's mashed potatoes in there. Okay. Um, let's get this on. Okay. I don't know what the white stuff is. Oh boy. Uh, again, it seems like it's like straight up uh, hamburger and mashed potatoes all in one. Uh, fair. I would definitely say I'm getting a very. Uh, corned beef and hash smell to this. Uh, and again, uh, it, it, it did come in patties. Oh, fully cooked. Okay, fully cooked, it's just... Well, you know what? There we go. Uh, I am the LA Beast. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm spilling it on my favorite blanket. This is a Yoder's hamburger from a can. From, probably from the United States. Oh, fully cooked. Oh, good day. There's white stuff. There's one little chunk of whiteness. Hmm. All right, it's like corned beef hash. Uh, corned beef hash with a hint of metallic. There's, there's like a, a sharpness in there. Dog food, uh, definitely dog food. Um, and then there's like uh, oil, it's like covered in oil. Hmm, interesting. All right, uh, towards that last bite there, now I did in fact get uh, a hint of ground beef. Now after all that initial taste. So I guess uh, if you actually are you're, you're at a campsite now throw these over an open fire, uh, put some like cheese on there. You could probably make a delicious burger All right, for something that comes in a can. Uh, would I pay $28 for this? I don't know. You know what I just did? One of the more mentally challenging food items that I've chosen to consume over the years would have to be Filipino delicacy, balloon eggs. And pretty much in a nutshell and or just a duck shell, all that a balloon egg really is is right before a baby duckling is about to hatch, the egg is hard boiled. And when you actually crack one of these things open, you can actually see the hair from the duck feathers. There's a boatload of membranes, even though I don't know what membranes are. And there is definitely an aroma of barnyard pee from animals that live in a barnyard. And after a few adult beverages, I finally gathered up enough courage to take a bite out of one of these things. And if you can actually get over the fact that you're eating a little baby duckling, it actually tastes like chicken. And it's not that bad. And the other day when I went to the Asian market, thank goodness, uh, they were fresh out of balloon eggs, so instead what I did, uh, I chose an item to revisit, and that would be a preserved duck egg, uh, also known as thousand-year-old duck eggs. Is a preserved duck egg really 1,000 years old? No, but they do come from China, and a way for the Chinese people to preserve these for later use was to put them in a mixture of clay, ash, salt, quicklime, and rice hulls for months on end, and what you get is this finished product where, as I smell it right here, right now, 
It, it, it has a, an ammonia smell. It smells like cleaning products and or straight up bleach. And the last time when I actually consumed one of these duck eggs was probably back in 2014. To where in my opinion back then, I said that it tasted like as if a herd of geese took a shit into it. And here today in 2022, I'm going to see if my opinion has changed. Without further ado, in order for me to open up this thousand year old duck egg, I'm actually going to use the blowout method, which goes like this. Now, to where if you actually, okay. Um, mm, geez Louise. Uh, it does have that ammonia smell, but it smells as if a human body uh, did not shower for like an entire week. Jeez. Uh, okay, well, you know what? The blowout method, hopefully, uh, hopefully goes like this. Okay, uh, I have putrefied duck egg jelly. Okay, you know what? That's uh, done. Great. This is a perfect example. Uh, and what I'm actually holding in my hand and what it looks like, it has the same consistency of a gusher fruit snack. Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, fair enough. I'll definitely say my final assessment on the smell. Uh, in the Northeast here in the United States of America, during the springtime when the geese fly back up north, on a, after it rained, it smells like wet geese turd grass. Oh, okay. The consistency of a gusher. I don't like squishy things. Oh my god. Okay, I just want to make sure that we get uh, officially what it looks like on the end. Here we go. Uh, uh, Oh, that was difficult. Oh. Again, the consistency of a gusher fruit snack, but it tastes like putrefied jelly duck egg jelly with a hint of geese shit. Whoa. Okay, you know what? I think we're good. I think we are totally good. Now, has my opinion on the taste and smell of a century-year-old duck egg, has it changed? No. Next item. I got the idea for this next item based off of the 1988 VHS tape series entitled Ramona, based off of the books by Beverly Cleary. To where when I was four years old, my parents used to rent these movies at the local library. And what I have here underneath this aluminium tinfoil would have to be straight up a straight up cow tongue uh, and or beef tongue that I got at the Asian market. In the episode entitled Mystery Meal, I guess Ramona's family was going through a tough time, so the mother actually opted for the cheaper, less flavorful kind of beef, and she actually bought the family beef tongue. But when I actually went to the Asian market here in 2022, the smallest, least expensive beef tongue cost me $39. Now, because I ordered other food items that are coming in from other countries, and that takes time, what I've had to do for the past four days is store this specific beef tongue outside on a bench in a bucket of ice. Now, this beef tongue is actually a pretty thick piece of beef and tongue, and what I've done to add some flavor is add some salt and pepper and pretty much just eight or nine, 10 minutes on each side over and over again we're the final product, in my opinion, uh, it, the Wicked Witch of the West from the movie The Wizard of Oz. If she had a mummified foot, that is what well, that is what this looks like. And as I'm here in this office, to where I spend most hours of my days, uh, this office is actually going to smell like mild beef now because this, this really doesn't smell that good. So without further ado. Let's jump in and see how it tastes. The last time I consumed food items from an Asian market such as 99 Ranch, uh, I actually did not cook the food. So what I did, I actually learned my lesson this time because I don't want to get botulism and cook the ever-living hell out of this thing. To where, uh, you know what, we're just going to dive right in. Oh, you can, you can literally see the taste buds. There you go, you can actually see the taste buds right there. 
um, and, and all the way up there. I thought that would actually, in my opinion, I feel like where the taste buds are, it kind of looks like pork rinds, uh, which is probably not the case whatsoever. So without further ado, I'm just going to cut this right down the middle and we'll see. Oh boy. Uh, okay, so I guess, oh, it's very, it, it, it's actually crackling like a pork rind. Oh, and I'll tell you what it smells like. Okay, not bad. Not totally bad. Uh, let me turn this towards the camera if you can see it there. Uh, and then we'll get a close up here. Mmm, okay. It, 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 it smells as if uh, it's like a gamey meat. Uh, I've had reindeer in a can before. I've had alligator burritos. Uh, I'm pretty sure like bison meat. It just, it smells very gamey as if I'm about to eat a gamey meat, but I'm actually about to eat a tongue. Um, okay, let's just, I think the skin, I think it's actually going to, I think it's going to taste delicious. Uh, just like head cheese. Oh, so just, just, we're going to, okay, cool. It looks like roast beef. And, okay, here we go. Mm. Oh, very juicy. Uh, it is totally very juicy. Um, there you go. Uh, it's dripping on the floor. Um, ladies and gentlemen, beef tongue. Wow. Interesting. It's very juicy. Uh, I'll definitely say it's very juicy. And like, I'm not quite sure. Uh, there's, it, it's not very meaty. Uh, there's like no meatness to it. It's weird. It's just very juicy. And then it's like a, a crisp, crackling, uh, not very flavorful tongue you get I definitely felt the bumps on the taste but done here's a here's a meaty piece of the tongue that actually had meat on it this looks like a nice piece of steak I uh, done fair enough this actually this looks delicious we're gonna take a couple more maybe one more bite here that looks like a piece of steak right there beautiful beautiful it tastes like a mac Fair enough. Um, it's very chewy. It's very gamey. Uh, and I'm, you know what? I would definitely say if it came down to it to where all I had to eat was beef tongue, could I do it for the rest of my life? Probably. And I'm pretty sure if you like, you marinated it properly, uh, it wouldn't taste that bad. Now the final three questionable slash strange food items that I'm about to consume, to which one of which is actually still fighting its obstacles being delivered here to this house, which should have been delivered four days ago. And when it gets here, quite possibly it's questionable whether or not I consume it. All three of these items must be consumed outside. Now the item that I have here in this bag, I'm probably gonna have to open using this hatchet that my dad gave, even though it's an ax. And what that item is, uh, it is very sharp, just like an ax. And that would be, uh, that would be a durian fruit and the last time that i had a durian fruit was for the first time back in july of 2013 as my former emt roommate at the rob nelson hope you're doing okay brother when he walked into the apartment he could smell the stench now people say that the worst part of eating a durian fruit is the smell but in my opinion uh as i'm actually holding this very sharp durian fruit it feels like i'm putting my hands on the backside of a porcupine. So be very careful. You, you hold it, jeez. Holding a durian fruit. Now because it's been almost nine years since I've smelled a durian fruit, I'm not quite sure what my nostrils are in for. But when I Google searched what the smell of a durian fruit smells like, people said that it smells like raw sewage, rotting flesh, 
and smelly gym socks. So without further ado, utilizing this hatchet safely, I'm going to, hopefully in one fell swoop, cut this open and give it a taste test here in 2022. Using the most extreme safety precautions, do not try and do this any, any time. And as you can see, excellent execution on my part. It's actually freezing cold outside, but I actually take ice cold showers to prepare me for moments like this. Uh, and as I can't feel my hands, uh, I'm actually going to just show you what the inside of this looks like. And you know what, right off the bat, now there's no immediate smell. Oh. And you, and you know what, quite honestly, uh, I, I have definitely smelled worse foods in my life. Not quite sure because this is frozen. Really doesn't smell that bad. Uh, and the last time I ate this, it reminded me as if I was eating a banana. Uh, and you know, we're just going to 100% totally jump right into this right now. So I'm going to very carefully just take out an entire chunk wad. Okay, that's, that's a big chunk wad. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of bananas. Uh, it kind of looks like a <laughs> shriveled up ball sack, but here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Now with a beautiful sunset in the background. Durian fruit. Smells like a grundle palace. Hmm, there's seeds. Kind of tastes like pumpkin. Hmm. It's like a sweet potato mashed potato, but it kind of smells like uh, as if you're in that same tunnel as Andy Dufresne from the movie Shawshank Redemption when he crawled through 500 yards of Shaka for his freedom. Uh, and here I am, uh, even though I'm a... Uh, great. Here I am. Not as bad as I remembered it whatsoever, quite honestly. Now, uh, that's a pretty cool crevice. Next item. That's not good. Now the second to last food item I actually consumed for the first time ever back in 2013. And thank goodness I'm outside right here right now. Because as I remember it, it smells like rotting dumpster juice. To where you know what, thank you to all the garbage men and women out there who haul away our trash. And this food item in my hand was shipped FedEx first class from Sweden. The home of the world's saltiest licorice, but also the home of the world's smelliest rotting fermenting fish in a can Sir Stroming uh, and as you can see right here right now uh, I ordered some sweet Sir Stroming fillets and as I remembered it uh, when I actually took the can opener to the can that there was a hissing noise uh, and after that hissing noise is when the smell really kicked in oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. It smells so bad. Oh my god. But honestly, the fish inside of this can does not taste that bad. And we're gonna find out right here, right now, if what I just said is actually true again, all these years later. Oh boy. Okay, there was no hissing sound. There's no hissing. There's definitely juices. Okay, we can see the juice is there. <sighs> I would definitely say uh, it kind of smells like uh, anchovies, salty anchovies that have been rotting for 37 years. Um, a straight up rotting tuna fish, r rotting tuna fish. Okay, there we go. This is what Sir Stroming, which is fermented herring in a can, um, not that bad. All right, so screw it. Before before the camera runs out of batteries, ladies and gentlemen, here I am eating Sir for the second time in my life. Have a good day. It smells really bad. It smells like caca, caca, caca. Whoa. 
Oh. All right. Oh. Very salty. Woo. Uh, it's, uh, it's like if you take a shot uh, of like whiskey or something like that, but taking a shot of salt. Wow. Uh, and, and yes, any juice that just got on my soul patch, uh, it really uh, uh, it smells like poo. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Uh, again, sushrami. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, 100%. Whoa. Fair enough. This is this is my final assessment here. The last time I actually consumed Sirstroming like nine years ago, I feel like the smell was worse. Uh, you know, I, I, I consumed it outside. I thought it tasted a lot better the last time. Uh, it's just, it was very salty this time. Uh, and I can still feel the burn on my tongue. Uh, and it feels like if a cat pooped in a litter box, uh, and then I rubbed all of that all over my face. That's kind of what it, it smells like right now. So heck yeah. Now for this specific video, I've actually been filming over the past three days. And thank goodness here on the fourth, the final item has in fact arrived. After going through much difficulty trying to get uh, from its originating country into the United States. Uh, and through my DHL tracking, there were multiple... Uh, objectives trying to get this in and what this package consists of is a putrefied rotting shark meat called Hakarl and Hakarl is actually the national dish of Iceland to where they take a Greenland shark or other sleeper sharks and cure it in a special fermentation process that actually goes back hundreds of years and what makes this putrefied shark meat putrefied is because it's hung for four or five months uh, outside as it cures and here today in this specific box from Nami.is, which is actually a company in Iceland that specializes in sending their delicacies through online services to people like myself. And I'm excited to see what the contents behold. Uh, there is in fact a Directorate of Fisheries note. Uh, and quite honestly, I have no idea what the words say, but I think because of this note, it allows Iceland to send fish products safely and freely uh, to other countries. You know what, I already opened the box, so it's already questionable uh, from what we're about to see. So let's get started. So here we go. And what I did, I actually opened the box as it arrived uh, because I was thinking like, oh my God, this stuff has to be on ice and like it's, it's rotting shark meat. So I just wanted to make sure uh, what it is I was getting myself into. There's actually very nice packaging. Um, Nami, I believe it's Nami.is has been in business since 1998. Um, so here we go. And, and the funniest part is, as we'll get a quick close-up of the inside of the box, is that it comes with, like, Icelandic newspapers. This is not what I was expecting to receive, uh, like, local Icelandic newspaper. Okay, so here it is. It smells like glue. Um, and, and yes, uh, does this putrefied shark meat come in a plastic bag? Yep, and I think on the form it actually said that it was jerky, so I guess maybe that's a loophole in order for it to get through customs, I am not sure, but we are going to open this questionable bag for the first time together right now. Okay, and it's in another, there's wetness, there's, there's wetness, I feel like this 100% straight up came uh, from like a factory in Iceland who does this stuff. White chunks, as I read on Google, it's, it's like a cheese-like texture, and it's got like um, a, a fishy taste with a mild, strong blue cheese. And then they say that the aftertaste of eating a piece of a coral, it's like if you just, if, a urine. Pretty much urine. It's like a urine aftertaste, as I guess it's going to smell like ammonia. Straight up. A coral from Iceland. We'll open this, and let's just get this done. I'm excited. I have a razor blade and I'm going to do this really, really carefully. Uh, let's go from the side. Oh, I'll, I'll give you my initial thoughts on the smell. God. Oh, it's very oily. It's got, okay. 
Ooh. Definitely, it's a, it, I can definitely smell the ammonia taste. I don't want to touch this with anything uh, really here. Uh, it's definitely an ammonia taste smell. Jesus. All right, you know what? Uh, no better time than now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a warm piece of rotting shark meat uh, that's been sitting in this package trying to get through customs for days now. L.A. Beast. Hakarl. Um, it's just, it's just a very slightly rank, uh, a rank smelling <laughs> putrefied shark meat. Here, here's number two. Let's, uh, let's give this another try. Uh, it's, uh, it's chewy. Honestly, honestly, like, uh, I, don't I don't think, think it's, it's that, that bad. bad. Uh, what are you doing up there? It smells like folded fish market in this house. Um, I'm gonna see what I can do to dispose of the. I can, I can literally smell the coral out on the front porch. I, didn't, I honestly didn't think that the smell would be that bad. I was wrong. So whatever you do, ladies and gentlemen, if you eat putrefied rotting shark meat from Iceland, don't do it in places that you like to spend time. Like, like your house. Have a good day.